I am finally getting around to filming my September and October lookbook. So I did make a bunch of things in September but majority of them were either mock-ups or you had already seen them in a kind of like review video so I decided not to do a standalone video for that because you know you'd seen most of them already but October I did get most of my plans done the only thing that didn't get made was the lace dress and I did make a mock-up for it but I have decided to change patterns completely I will talk more about that in November's plans which is coming on Friday so the first thing that I got made in September since the last time you've seen anything was this dress the Vogue 9076 with all of the piping detail on this absolutely gorgeous fruity viscose that I've had in my stash for ages and I think I got it from Material Girl Laura I think it might have been from Cotton Reel Studio I saw it I fell in love with it I bought as much as I could which was three meters mum fell in love with it I went back and bought some for her she wanted to make a dress they only had enough for a shirt so I held on to this for the longest time because I didn't know what to do with it the Vogue 9076 is a really good pattern because it has very nice full skirt and long full sleeves but it only needs three meters of fabric 150 wide fabric but still three meters I thought was pretty good for the volume that there is in the skirt and the length of this skirt I have promised to sew along for this dress and the Patreon peeps have voted fabric has been picked and the sew along will be coming out at the end of this month I'm gonna make another one of these this is my third iteration I actually don't have the first two anymore mum has them because I didn't make them in colors that were great for me one was a muted red color and then the other one was a teal which I absolutely love teal cobra corsage absolutely love that one but neither of those dresses made me really happy when I put them on. Navy is definitely my darkest neutral and all these, I would say this is an autumnal print for sure, but I really like how it looks on me. I was supposed to be doing a sew along for this one, but it got to the point where I was getting in my own way so much with that necess necessity to have the sew along done with this fabric that it just sat in fabric form for 10 months. I ended up just going, you know what? I'm gonna put another vote up for the Patreon peeps to pick a fabric for me to make another one from because I love this dress and I know I'm gonna want more so let's just make this one I hadn't done the sew along for a long time I'd filmed the sew along with the teal one I didn't like how that came out so yeah this dress was just well that sew along was just cursed but I love how this dress has come out and I'm really excited for the next one which again you'll be seeing the fabric for on Friday I have changed the pattern around again it's the original skirt but I've made it with a side zipper instead of the front placket opening because I just hated how that thing came out I just I did not like it I could finish it neatly on the insides but it just didn't sit nicely in my opinion for the type of finish that I like so as much as I hate side zippers I have put one in and I much prefer the finish of this one good thing is I did make the skirt 10 months ago so the skirt has had 10 months to drop on the bias and it did as did the lining those have been leveled and they will never lead to be leveled again they're never going to do any more biasy things so you know that's one good thing about cutting this out and leaving the skirt to drop for 10 months although I promise not to do that with these two because no although to be honest I can't probably wear either of these two for a while so maybe but really happy with this one love how it's turned out we'll be making more we'll be having the sew along come out at the end of November possibly the beginning of December but that's what I'm aiming for then I moved on to my second iteration of the McCall's 8177 I have done a sew along for the strappy maxi dress and then I went through and did a sew along for just adding on the sleeves with the elasticated channels in them I love how this has turned out I did change things up and I have lined the bodice of this to the waistline. I like that, but I am going to get some more viscose maracane in and actually draft a skirt lining piece for this and fully line this dress. It's excessive, you don't need to do that. I'm just doing it because of the type of finish that I prefer, but the facing on the original dress with understitching and pressing and doing all the things that you're meant to do it still kept just rolling out at the top which I didn't like so as I say I extended the lining on this one and I much prefer how this has come out and it does sit as it should do there is a sew along for the sleeves of this one I've also done a review on this dress because I have made another one which is the next piece that I'm going to show you I'm really happy with all of them I 
I absolutely love how this one's come out and I really love the fabric. I've actually bought eight meters of this fabric and I've got a good sort of four and a half meters left. There will be something else being made out of this fabric at some point in the future. But yeah, really pleased with this one. So much so that I made this beast. This one is a zip up back and it has a waist seam and a tiered and gathered skirt on it. Now I have done a tutorial for a tiered and gathered skirt which you can see up here and I had fully intended to do a tutorial for how to change this pattern from a front button up to a back zip with a waist seam in it but I did film the entire process for this. You could not see what was going on because of the fabric I've picked. I mean you know like I really should be more thoughtful about the fabrics that I pick for sew alongs. I try and pick ones that have a high contrast for the right and the wrong side and this one obviously doesn't. The right side has raised spots all over it but that was difficult to see on the sew along so I've not put that out but I am going to put one out for the hacks of turning this into a zip up dress with a waist seam so that you can add any skirt that you want to it. I also decided that I wanted the addition of the regular straps plus the sleeves because of the security that would give me. I really really like how that's turned out as well although I do need to tweak the positioning of the straps a little bit and I also need to tweak the position of the waist seam that I have on this dress. It's ended up as a happy accident. I did make this dress specifically to be worn under a dandel and I have made a dandel or my version of a dandel but I'm not showing you that this this video because there is going to be a separate video coming for that I am just waiting for some lining fabric for the final silk form because I didn't have anything that was a perfect lining color for my brown and turquoise silk and I didn't want to just wing it with what I had so I've ordered some chocolate brown lining fabric which is on its way. But yeah the drop to waist on this ended up being a happy accident because I want the dandel to be really really cinching at the waist and all the extra bulk and gathering in from the tiered and gathered skirt right on the waist would probably have made that quite uncomfortable. Having said that I still might go back in and take the skirt off of this, take about half an inch out of the waistline and put the skirt back on because it is slightly more drop waist than I personally like. Although the other flip side of that is I will probably only ever wear this with belts because it's my preference, possibly things over it because that's what this was designed for. So I love this dress. I think it needs some tweaks to be perfect but I'm really pleased that I made it and I'd always envisioned making something like this with this fabric and it's going to look awesome under the dandles and that video like I say will be coming soon and you will see that in all its glory then. Yeah. The skirt was epic. Putting in this lace was um, interesting but I did, I got there, I did it and it, it's it's amazing. I love it. The next piece that I finished was my Scout capelet. This is a Gertie Patreon exclusive pattern. I have used what is actually technically a belt buckle as the fastener on this and it's um, not holding up as well as, it's, as, as it should so that might get replaced later but I did it with the hood from the Princess Coat expansion that you get for the raincoat. This is my first of my Make 9 successful pieces. I have done the Rita blouse as well. I did also sew up the Lucille trouser muslin this uh, last couple of months and I hated how it came out on me. I really didn't like it. I didn't like the shape at all. So I'm going back to the drawing board. I kind of realized that I need trousers that don't have any kind of front pleat on them for me to feel happy. So I might even go back to the Empire waist trousers from Decades of Style because they're very flat fronted and, and waist enhancing and I have changed shape since I made those last ones so I might try those again in yet another fabric but we don't I don't know We're, I, I'm still on my trouser of trou mission to find trousers that I like but yes this is my first successful piece from my make nine it's in the navy wool that I got from Lady McElroy with some kind of warm grey faux fur trim that I got from the Goldhawk Road and I still have a decent chunk left so I'm thinking I'm actually going to make a little muff as well because I think that would really really look cute with the cape, the coat and the muff. I don't know how often I'm going to wear this. I, I lined it with a hammered satin that I got from the Goldhawk Road as well. I think it's so so cute. Like I say I don't know how often I'm going to wear it. I did try the magnet thing and this has got magnets sewn in at the neck but 
the place that I needed to sew the magnets onto the coat through all of the layers of fabric I needed stronger magnets and I didn't have stronger magnets so the magnets are only in here they're not in there the hammered satin is slippery which is what I like for linings for coats especially for the arms but it because it has a little bit of texture it does kind of stick to the coat so I'm not too worried about this flying off and in all honesty if the coat's open this is probably not going to be on at the same time either that coat definitely looks better zipped all the way up than it does kind of like half zipped up it's either a completely undone or a completely done up coat this one I'm glad I made this I'm glad I've got a successful thing on my pink nine because I'm really not going to complete that this year. But yeah, it's it's a fun piece. I have no idea how often I will wear this, at, at, if I'm honest. But I'm really glad that I made it and I had enough fabric to do so. And yeah, it's very, very cute. Very cute. The next piece is the Pauline Alice Hemispheric Coat. I have been threatening to make this for a good six years, if not slightly longer. I'm so pleased that I have finally got it done. Again, it's in the Lady McElroy wool with the Goldhawk Road hammered satin lining. I have gone for a little pop of purple with some flat piping detail with some polyester bias binding that I had in my stash. I would have gone for red, but I didn't have enough to do both the cape and the coat. So bright purple it was, because I had two rolls of that one. I've interlined it with cotton flannel and I've done the same with the cape. And I tend to do that with most of my coats because it's a layer of extra warmth. And it's also a really nice way of, of finishing the bottom of the coat, hemming it. The pattern itself was really easy to follow. There is a sew along for this pattern already out there which is really really good it's in French but there are English subtitles and I found it really easy to follow and it was nice to have a kind of like tutorial for how this little bit at the bottom was finished this little lining piece because the coat is completely bagged out which is very very clever I really like how that was done I absolutely love how this coat has turned out my complaint about the pattern is there are no lengthen and shorten lines you have to make it up for yourself i have added in the end two and a half inches of length to the torso there are notches at the waistline the whole way around so i literally picked those drew a line and added the length in there the muslin that i made and i hopefully still have the footage of the muslin that I made. It looked like it was too big at the back. When Jojo was here we did sort of pin it and see how much I'd need to take out of those seams to make it fit me better. But when I took it off, I decided that the waist just wasn't sitting where I wanted it to. So I'd already added an inch of length. I went back and added an inch and a half more. So two and a half inches in total. I probably should have added three, but I think it looks really good and I'm not getting that baggy at section at the back where my my waist you know like usually where you'd have a sway back there was kind of just too much fullness there and that's because that was supposed to be what was going over my butt and it was going over my lower back so there are no sh length and shorten lines on this pattern i have a longer torso from the base of my neck to my waist at 17 inches i have to add an inch of length to most of the mccall's butterick and vogue patterns for reference these ones i don't know the height that pauline alice has drafted for but i'm guessing it's on the shorter side but you know once I'd worked that out the muslin was completely necessary it went together really really quickly I will say the front pockets are tiny and I don't like where they're positioned I think if I ever make this again and I'm not ruling it out because I do really like this I think I would move the pockets to the side seams I would make them bigger because they are very very small but I mean I like I like the theory of where they're placed and they are invisible they're very well done they are in seam pockets in the front what is technically a dart although it's two separate pieces but it ends up being sewn as a dart once you've pieced them together yeah it's just it's just not for me that placement of pockets and also the size of the pockets I want big pockets so I would move those it's very a-line I knew this going in and looking at lots of other people's finished coats 
it is very very a-line i did a lot of top stitching on mine and i did top stitch the side seams i was going to unpick it but i've decided not to i've decided to leave it as is because i do wear a lot of very full skirts so you know it's not the end of the world that it's an a-line coat i really like it i've worn it out once it was very warm i very much liked the high neck as well the only thing is zipping it up is a little bit difficult but then all zip up coats when they're longer tend to be a bit of a pain i don't mind a zip up from the waist but a zip up from that far down it's just a little bit awkward getting it done but once you once you've got it done it's totally fine there is a tutorial out there for turning this into a button up with a hidden button placket and i will link to that in the description down below i really like that idea although I'm not sure that I would do it because there's a lot of sort of changing of parts and pieces and things. Honestly I have so many coat patterns that whilst I do love this one and I will wear this one and I'm classing this one as a giant success I'm not sure that I would make it again. Yeah successful love it probably won't make it again but I do have some ideas for if I do. <laughs> <laughs> but the only reason I'm probably not going to make it again is because I have so many coat patterns that I want to try and more that I want to kind of like remake so yeah <laughs> happy with this though we've gone from a very elegant and classy coat to a very loud and leery jacket this is the Rigel Bomber jacket I made one of these last Knitmas and it was using the velvet cobra corsage with some red and green cuffing that the very lovely Alex of Gingerhead and Co had given me I kind of was going through my bag making stash and came across this Lima jungle cotton that I got from the Textile Express and they still have this so I will link to it and I bought a meter of it because I was planning on making a bag but I don't really carry pattern bags anymore. I've kind of come to the realization that I need to make plain coats and plain bags and then patterned everything else because otherwise nothing goes together as we know. I'm not very good at print clashing, I don't feel confident in it but I decided that this was a really really good use of this fabric and you guys had asked for a sew along for the Rigel Bomber jacket because I had fully lined mine. I've got a slippery lining for the sleeve and then I've got this kind of like fleecy teddy bear fabric that's actually a stretch from Guthrie and Garni and I bought it at one of the shows ages ago to make a top and then couldn't decide what top to make with it kept it in the stash for ages and then finally realized that it would be best as a lining because that way you get the floofiness on the inside but then you still have pretty on the outside because the outside of this one is a it's like a French terry which is very nice but it's plain green and it's just like yeah so I am over the moon with how this came out the sew along is is up and I'm really pleased with how that came out too. I can actually see myself making more of these in possibly plain colours but I, I this this to me is not necessarily an outdoor jacket it's probably more of like a cardigan for when I'm having my jogging bottoms and a t-shirt kind of a day and my jogging bottoms are plain and I do have lots of pattern t-shirts but I have lots of plain t-shirts as well so I can definitely see myself making some more of these as cardigans because I do have quite a bit of this fabric left this does not take much because I've cropped this jacket as well I have downsized as well it's not as oversized as the pattern recommends but that's again my preference so yeah I can see myself making more of these as basically what are cardigans someone in the comments did point out that if you just literally used the outer layers as your lining layers and didn't put the facing in you could have a reversible jacket and you can get double-sided zips I know I've seen those before so yes you could totally make a reversible jacket from this the cuffing would be plain and then depending on what fabric you use for the other side you would have two looks in one jacket as it were the only thing with that as I've said many times, I really like slippery linings for my sleeves, which this is. This is a kind of wood grain moire, moire silk, except it's a moire polyester from Minerva.com and they don't have any more I did check. And so if I made this reversible, I wouldn't want this as the whole outside of the jacket and then also I wouldn't want this as my inside. But 
if you have different plans for the lining of your jacket you could totally make this reversible the only thing you would do is just use the outside pattern pieces for the inside fabric that you chose and make sure to get a double-sided zipper so that you have a pull both sides but yeah I love this I'm so pleased with how this came out I'm so sorry that the lighting keeps changing we're having the weirdest weather here <laughs> but yeah I'm really pleased with how this came out love this and like I say I'm not ruling out making more because I can imagine wearing these quite frequently as another alternative to cardigans and I do love a cardigan. The next thing I made was my Burda Dando mock-up and I'm really pleased with how this has turned out but I'm not going to talk to you about that anymore because as I say there is a video coming for the full thing once I've made up the silk version in the absolutely gorgeous brown and turquoise silk that the very lovely Karin sent me so that video is coming very soon and then the very final thing that I got done in October literally the very last day in October is my witch's hat is kind of a bit over the top and a bit of a monstrosity and I'm not going to put it on because I've got my hair up and it's already too tight for my head I end up with very very severe ridges in my head if I try and put this on for a long period of time I really enjoyed making this and I really love how oh <laughs> I really love how it's come out I only ended up with two fairly severe burns from the <laughs> from the glue gun and one minor cut from the window screen that Christine McConnell uses and I was following a Christine McConnell tutorial the video has not done as well as I hoped it would but you know what I had fun making it and it was nice to try something different I can 100% see myself making another one of these but using actual hat making pieces uh, like materials like cinema French canvas buckram those kind of things I want to make one that fits <laughs> for, first, for the first thing I want to make one that I can actually wear for a long period of time as part of a costume and I do want to make one for a costume I have in my head a red version for next year the brown micro suede that I got was from minerva.com and they do have a red version of that and I think a red I, I mean I'm clearly having a bit of a red moment but I think a red one of these hats with a red witch's piratey costume to go with it would look absolutely awesome and then I will just need to find a Halloween party to go to so that I can wear my costume even if it means hosting one at the house and making my friends and family come here <laughs> but I am pleased with this this um, feather monstrosity is is a lot but I mean it's also gorgeous and I had a lot of fun putting it together there is an entire video about the making of this which I will have linked up there and also in the description down below. I'm genuinely over the moon with how it's come out looks wise and it is now going to live on the mannequin in the corner as a display piece because as I say it tries to eat my head when I put it on. I will attempt again in the future to make something that actually fits my noggin and can be worn for a long period of time and doesn't try to kill me the entire time that I'm making it. But yeah I'm very very pleased with this. I did also refashion my red skirt which I am currently wearing but I will show you a twirl of that as well. It was a good two inches too big for me. It was one of those ones where it's like I'm just gonna have to remake it but then I couldn't find any red denim that I liked. I got the skirt out of my future proofing box and decided that if I took the patch pockets off of the side seams and made them into complete patch pockets then they could be moved anywhere on the skirt and then the seam allowances at the side seams could be taken in or let out as my weight fluctuates so I took the skirt to pieces the other day did all the things that I wanted to, wanted to do it was a success I love how this has turned out I have a lot of these skirts that are in my future proofing box because I did make them when I was about two stone heavier than I am now and so they fit beautifully then but they are way too big for me now even with 
belting and I do like belts but yeah even with cinching it in with a belt they don't fit quite right. I had because of the pocket situation ruled out changing them but now that I have done this one I think I'm going to work my way through the others that I have because I absolutely love this skirt and the shape is great for me and I love the colours that I've got and they go really well with a lot of my wardrobe a lot of the tops and things that I have so I think it would be a good idea to bring them in so that they fit me now but maintain the seam allowance so that I can let them out if I need to for the future which is another way of future proofing rather than just making the same thing in different sizes which is also obviously a viable option if you have the space and the fabric budget but um, yeah I'm so pleased to have my red skirt back I absolutely love this thing. I did also get a couple of muslins sewn up the bodice of the 9182 which is this one here and the Lakala bodice. I'm really glad that I made a second muslin for the Lakala bodice because I had done one once before but that was probably about six years ago when I thought about it so I thought a second muslin was safe and it really doesn't fit the way that I like it to so I'm going to completely pivot with that lace dress project but the 9182 came out really really well so I have gone ahead and cut that out of the fabric that the Patreon peeps have voted for and I spent six hours with the peeps on Sunday at the hangout this last Sunday making both of these skirts this is a 5951 so now I just have the bodices to do and then these ones are doing their biasy thing which yep that one is already doing nut spicy things because this is a giant skirt it's a huge circle skirt can't believe i've not made this before i don't know what's taking me so long but yeah really pleased that i've got those two things done as well the bodices of which will get made over the next couple of months and put together because neither of these are particularly appropriate for the colder weather although i have changed the bodice on this one so it can be worn as a pinafore although it's technically meant to be a spring summer dress but you know we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see how the uh, layering goes but yeah very glad that I've got those done as well so all in all I have been really prolific over the last couple of months and I'm really pleased with everything that I've got done I actually really think that everything that I've sewn as well has been a huge success I don't think there's been any duds this this last couple of months or this last six weeks which is awesome I do think I want to tweak the white dress just a little bit like I say and there is a sew along coming for that because I fully stand behind my my patterns are expensive we need to make them work hard for us so I have the waist seam but zip up back hack and also adding extra fullness to the skirt with Godet's hack coming up for that pattern at some point in the future when I have time but yeah the rest of them I just over the moon with how they've turned out so pleased that I have finally got the hemispheric coat finished I love it I think it's gorgeous it's another one that I'm going to be very proud to wear out and about I am really looking forward to getting my red coat made in the December because I have a feeling that's going to end up being my everyday coat because it will be really bright but I do think navy is good for me and I do really like how it works in with the rest of my wardrobe as well because of the shape of it so yeah overall very very happy with everything I've made but I'd be really interested to hear which one is your favorite so let me know in the comment section down below if you've enjoyed this video you might want to check out this one here <laughs>